Something's changing in our weather. The cycle of the season seems less settled. Hot days are even hotter. Heavy rains fall at strange times. And storms have a new intensity. Many of us are so busy with our modern lives that we hardly notice these changes. But people who really study the weather, the farmers, the fishermen, the scientists, they know these changes are real. Many now believe we could be on the edge of a major transformation to the Earth's climate system that could dramatically change our lives and maybe affect our very survival. The most dreaded of all weather events in the Caribbean are hurricanes. Fueled by warm tropical seas, these enormous weather systems unleash torrential rains and powerful winds, causing widespread devastation. In the last 10 years, there has been a significant increase in the intensity and number of storms. Although this increase is partly due to the natural cycle of hurricanes, Recent studies suggest that climate change is also playing a significant role in the development of stronger and more frequent storms in our region. And it only takes one hurricane, because it's a high impact event, it only takes one hurricane to cause catastrophic damage on any particular island. The point is we will continue to be under threat by a very severe system which can cause millions and upon billions of dollars of damage in our region and we ought to be prepared. Hurricanes are not the only kind of extreme weather event that has been causing widespread destruction in recent years. In 2005, Guyana experienced the worst flooding the country has seen in living memory. A combination of torrential rain and high spring tides left thousands stranded in Georgetown and on the East Coast. These floods uh, resulted from um, rainfall within a shortened period, which was the most intense and highest levels to be recorded in Ghana's history. Persons thought that climate change, well, it was something about the future. It was something about the scientists. But after 2005 and 2006 in Ghana, it became a real thing and something that moved, as I said, at the top of government's agenda. Further inland, on the Essequibo River, people have also noticed changes in the pattern of the rains. The traditionally dry months are no longer as dry as they once were. The seasons appear to be merging with each other. Because years ago, time like now, used to get sheer sun, you know? It used to be breezy and a lot of sun, but now you can't predict it that good because rain, rain. All year long you get the rain nowadays. Across the region, people are noticing other changes in our weather, particularly an increase in the number of very hot days. Years gone by, it was hot, but not as hot as it is. It's like you're baking when you're walking in the sun. And the Bible tells you that in the last days, you'll be seeing signs and wonders. So our elders, believe that these are some of the signs and wonders that we have seen. But what we have to tell them is that God made all things bright and beautiful, and it is our responsibility to keep it beautiful for his return. So we can't just sit back and say, because it's the signs of time, we're not doing anything about it. Because we have to take care of ourselves, our community, and our country, because climate change is everybody's business. Measurements taken by meteorological stations across the region have been studied by leading climate scientists from the University of the West Indies. The temperatures are in fact increasing, both the maximum and the minimum temperatures. The number of hot days and hot nights are increasing, while the numbers of cold days and cold nights are decreasing. So there's definitely a temperature change. We are not the only ones feeling the changes in our weather. Plants and animals are also showing signs that the Caribbean's environment may be in a period of transition.
one of the most sensitive of all animals to temperature, is coral. Coral reefs are one of the region's most beautiful and valuable ecosystems. Tourists come from all over the world to marvel at the spectacular diversity of life that can be found in these underwater oases. Coral reefs are essential nursery grounds for many species of fish, providing food for our communities. Reefs also produce the white sand on our beaches and protect the shoreline from the constant pounding of ocean swells. Corals are far more important to the Caribbean than most people realize. In 2005, exceptionally warm sea temperatures had a devastating effect on the reefs of the Eastern Caribbean, causing the worst mass coral bleaching ever seen in the region. Everything turned white, everything. The brain coral, star coral, finger coral, Everything was white. Monitoring surveys have revealed that many of the corals that survived the bleaching are now affected by a fatal disease that is spreading to previously healthy reefs. Rising sea temperatures are considered to be the greatest threat facing corals worldwide. And some experts are even predicting that coral reefs may almost completely disappear in the coming century because of climate change. The survival of our precious reefs hangs in the balance and will depend on how quickly corals can adapt to warmer conditions. There are signs that some types of corals are less prone to bleaching, but their battle for survival is often made harder by pollution and siltation, which have already claimed a third of Caribbean reefs. If we want our reefs to survive, we need to help them by keeping our coastal waters clean and clear. While corals dislike heat, other animals thrive on it. Unfortunately for us, one of them is the disease-bearing mosquito. Warm temperatures speed up the reproduction rates of mosquitoes and shorten their life cycle, increasing the incidence of diseases such as dengue and malaria. This year, in August, September, October, three countries had dengue outbreaks that had never had it in many years. Martinique, which is the richest island in the Caribbean, had a dengue outbreak uh, with 4,000 cases in August. The same thing occurred in Jamaica, the same thing occurred in St. Lucia. So again, these are things that were uh, never happened before or they were very rare, but three cases in one year in the Caribbean. As with corals, it is our willingness to deal with these threats through local action that will make the difference. I know that uh, we tend to look to governments and say, well, why aren't they spraying with insecticides and all that? But the truth is that has very little effectiveness. We found in our studies that um, a lot of, sometimes the mosquitoes are already resistant to some of the chemicals. And secondly, the chemical doesn't penetrate to where the mosquitoes are resting. So that is a very little, that is sort of palliative. What we really can be do, doing though is eliminating the habitats, getting rid of the containers like drums and buckets and uh, sources of uh, plants which are producing mosquitoes. And, uh, be very vigilant around this time when they're likely to be dengue being, being transmitted. So I think that is the more important thing for us to do. So what's causing these changes to our climate? Virtually all scientists now agree that humans are to blame. We are causing the climate to change because we are changing the composition of our atmosphere. The Earth is surrounded by a thin layer of gas called the atmosphere. This layer of gas is really our survival blanket. It protects us from harmful radiation while allowing some radiation through the clear atmosphere to the surface of the Earth. 
Much of this radiation is reflected back into space, but some is absorbed by the atmosphere and released as heat or infrared radiation. This ability to trap heat is called the greenhouse effect because the atmosphere acts like the glass in a greenhouse. Certain gases like carbon dioxide are particularly good at trapping heat. Over the last hundred years humans have produced more and more carbon dioxide so more heat was trapped in the atmosphere by this enhanced greenhouse effect.